Welcome back to PJ Chain Design. This is PJ. Today I would like to show you how to create this cross ring with the Rhino 3D software and more importantly how to calculate the ring size correctly with the B setting on one of it. Are you ready? Let's get started. On this design, you can see one ring is higher than the other one. And in fact, they are more oval shaped. That's why when you look at the front view, they will be a perfect circle. Also, this type of the prong set is not adding the prong. Instead, it's kind of a cutting off whatever the metal there and to make the existing metal into the prong. So that's starting from the scratch. We are going to start it with the front view and using the circle command and to set up the ring size for whatever for you. For me, it is a demonstration is going to be 16 millimeter. And I'm going to draw a line from the top view and this from the top view going to snapping it right in the center. And it can be like how um, big of the cross that you're going to have. It can be the certain degree that you want, but I pretty much wanted to do something in this angle. In order to find this circle into this angle, we are going to use the command called curve from two view. And with this command, you're going to pick up this circle and also this straight line and it will automatically create this line right there as you can see now the line is more of the oval shape if we took it take a look on the front view we'll still keep it round shape all right once we have that i'm going to hiding this big curve right there and just dealing with this one and let me turn it into the red color to show you we need a cross section so i'm going to using the conic corners of the round rectangle and I'm going to use the three points so starting from here for whatever thickness that we want it uh, that's say I'm going to have it this thick and uh, roughly about this the width and I wanted to have some sort of the pillow shape right there we need to move in this back to the center so I'm going to use the move command and move it back uh, from the midpoint to the quadrant so then we will have that first one right there. Now the second one that I'm going to have is just having this one mirror to the other side. And I want to mirror on both of them. So let's go ahead to use the mirror command and snapping again to the center and to here. All right. So for this one right here, we can simply just using the sweep one rail. You got rail, you got cross section right there. All right, the second one, we do need to make it a little bit taller than this one. And so that way we can set the stone on top of it. However, if you try to re, uh, to pull in any of the curve from this one, it seems a little bit too many points there, right? So we need to rebuild this one. Let's go ahead to use the rebuild command and we want to rebuild this curve. So far we have 14 point. I'm going to change to 12 point and I'm going to click OK. Now if I turn on the control point or use the command points on, you can pick up this, those three on the top and basically Basically, we want them to be just a little bit higher. You don't need to have it too high, just a little bit higher is enough. Okay, so now we have this one. Let's go ahead to using sweep one rail, and then you have this is your rail, this is your cross section, and it will get something like that. Now, if this is too tall, you don't want it to be like too tall like that, you can turn on the record history and click OK. So if you feel like this is too tall, you can pick up the control point again, move it down a little bit if you want to. This is uh, because you have a history recorded. Okay, so now we are done with the ring. Double make sure the ring that we have, notice that you have this ring and it is cutting inside of it, right? The, because the ring that we have in the angle for our profile, and that's why you have some pieces inside. So all we need to do is pick up the original ring size. We want to extrude it straight for both sides. And then I'm going to use the Boolean difference and pick up this one and this one and difference out from this one. All right, it will say break the history, but that's okay. And now you can see that if you take a look on the render view, you're going to see it's flat from inside. So it may not be perfectly square there, but it's okay. As long as we keep the outside shape, it will still look like a square and we'll make sure the ring size is correct. 
All right, so now let's deal in with the stone setting. We wanted to arrange the stone. So first of all, if you go sign up my newsletter in the description below, then you should able to download a stone to bring in. So when you bring in the stone, stone is in five millimeter. You can size down 3D scale to the proper size. I'm going to move in this one to the top. And I do want it to have the stone sit in a little bit. So I want to make sure that the girdle of my stone is underneath the surface, right? So that will be the stone position. Maybe I will need to have it a little bit lower. All right. Now the second thing is we need to find a curve to flow. So I'm going to extract the ISO curve. It is under the curve that you have curve from the object and then you have extract the ISO curve, which means I'm going to find a curve from the current surface and I want to snapping into the endpoint right there. As you can see that I have this one and I'm going to mark it into the green color. And we only need to do half of it and the rest of it we are going to just mirror it. So I'm going to using a split command and split with the point and the, on the top. And once you click the point, I want to split right in the middle, like quadrant right here. And on the side, you can decide where you want the, the stone to stop. So I'm going to stop it maybe right there and we can delete the rest of it right there. Okay, so this is the only section that we need to deal with. Now, I also like to have a stone been punching the hole. So I'm going to creating a cylinder, a uh, snapping here, and the hole doesn't have to be too big. Half size of the stone should be uh, sufficient enough. And then this is the, going to be the hole I'm going to punch out. I'm also going to creating uh, a cut for the stone to show off a little bit better. So I'm going to creating some sort of a cylinder look like this and having the cylinder rotated into the angle that is working the same angle like the stone and move it to the center of the stone. All right. And I wanted to sit it a little bit lower something like that. Let's give it a cut and see how does that look using a boolean difference, this one out of this one. All right, so this is how much we're going to see the stone to coming out. If you feel like this is not enough, then you can make the hole or make the cut a little bit thinner. Notice that we want to cut the prong out. We need to have a prong about 20% touching the stone. So in fact, I might need to have them get a little bit skinnier. So let's go ahead to use the 1D scale and I would like to scale it down just a little bit right there. Okay, so now I have this cut. I also have this. It's going to trim and then let's go ahead to flow it. So we have this one, this one, and this one. We want to treat it as a set. Okay, and then we are going to use the command. Let's choose the transform. You have array along curve. All right, it's going to ask you where is your curve. We want to pick up the green one. And it's going to ask you like you will have two there and you will need to decide how many do you want it. I'm going to guess about eight. And as you can see, if I have eight, the stone is touching each other. So that's changed to seven and I wanted to see if the gap is enough. If it is not enough, maybe I want to reduce to six because I do need to have a slight cutting in the middle. All right. So if that look good to you, let's hit enter and then we'll have something like this. All right, so the next one that I'm going to do is making a copy. So we want to copy this one, maybe somewhere coming out. Let me using, actually using the gumball to move this one out and making a copy. And I do want it to have this one scale it down to be like really narrow, more, more like a knife edges. So I want to use 1D scale, snapping right here, and I wanted to scale it down something like this. Okay, so this is going to be the cutter for our prong. Have it sit it down there and double make sure how it look. We can give it a cut and see how it look. I'm going to pick up here, pick up here and see how it that's deep enough for you to cut the prong. If it is too deep, we can simply just moving up a little bit for something like this. 
All right, so now I have that piece. We were using six piece for six stone, so we're gonna do the same thing. Let's go ahead to use a transform, and you have a ray along the curve, and we're gonna pick up this piece that we just made, and we wanna pick up this curve with the same number for six, so we can get something like this. So if that looked good to you, I'm going to pick up all of them beside the, this one and this one, and I'm going to use the rotate command, snapping to the zero, and we want to rotate 180 degree, make sure copy is equal yes on the top, and we want to rotate over there, so then we'll have them there. Now let's take a look on how this cut going to look. That's using the boolean difference, and we want to pick up the ring as the first one, and this is the cutting tool, all of them with the spiky things, and let's hit enter, and double make sure that look okay to you. If that look all right, we're gonna continue to cutting this, we're gonna pick up this, as a cutting, as a subject to be trim or to be boolean difference, and those are the cutting tool, and we wanna hit enter, all right. And then now we have this, notice that it's more, it's hard to push the prong because we need to have another right in the middle, right? And we need to make this one a bit longer. So I'm going to pick up the green curve right here and let's go ahead to use the curve and we can extend it the curve and make them a little bit longer. And so I'm going to pick up the end right here and maybe touching the midpoint right here. Now. We don't actually want it to touch this one when we when we are trimming that we'll have a little bit problem. We just need it a little bit shorter, so I'm going to bring it back something like this. Alright, so the same thing we can do on the other side. We need to have a channel cut it out. So I'm going to use the extended curve and we're gonna pick up this curve, touching the midpoint. Once you are done, pick up the midpoint and bring it back a little bit. All right, so let's give it a try. I'm going to pipe it with the flat cap, and I'm going to pick up this green line, and we want to size for radius or the diameter, the radius for 0.5 or the diameter for one, and see how it goes. All right, so now I have a channel over there, as you can see on this side. So if I go ahead to using the boolean difference, this one out of this one. Then you can see I have four prong holding the stone, right? And then I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to pipe this and for the same diameter, I'm going to do the 0.5 millimeter and don't do the round cap like what I did there. And also this curve seems not right. It seems not in the middle, so I just need to uh, make sure that it's right in the middle, it's not tilted, otherwise it will look so weird. So I'm going to bring it back to whatever it's supposed to be. All right, so with this, we are going to pipe it again, but make sure you have a flat cap. And then we wanna do 0.5 millimeter as a radius, and we'll get something like this. All right, again, we wanna use the Boolean difference, this one, out of this one. So then we'll have the stone set it right. The reason I still keep the hole there is because we want to trim the hole all the way to the bottom. If I trim it first and then bowling the, the other ring, then the, the hole will be you know, sealed again. So let's go ahead to have this one and this one to be bowling union together. And if you have something like that, it's because we already trim inside of a ring. And so it has all the seam is aligned. All you need to do now is actually just move it a little bit. I'm going to move on this one and just have it going down minus 0 0.01. And it's really small, you almost not feel it, but it hopefully will solve this problem. Okay, problem solved. Now we can go into do the rest of the trim. It's easier for me to hide all the stone right there. And then all of this color, we're just going to do the bowling different with the ring and all the cutting tool from the top. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you want to advance your jewelry cat design, you definitely want to learn stone setting and I have a perfect course for you. In this course, I'll teach you many different types of stone setting 
not only for a simple round and oval, but also including the fancy cut and pave setting. Check out my stone setting for jewelry care design course in the description below. Hope to see you in the course. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next.